It's Friday. It's 11 o'clock. That could mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella filling in for Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. We're here to bring you the latest news from Trump. Trump week. Trump it's, week. It has been loaded. It yes. has been completely loaded. Yes, it has. And as every week, it's, it's drinking out of the fire hydrant of news. Yes. So, and how much can we take? I don't know. Apparently, Not much more, I think, Apparently maybe. we keep showing up here every week, so apparently the answer is more. <laughs> maybe we call it more. Maybe we call it more Trump week. More Trump week, okay, yes. So, okay, so <laughs> the title of this show is... Hissy fit of POTUS, <laughs> and by gosh, did we have one. Oh, boy. So before we start, um, I'd like to read something that the President of the United States has done, along with every politician, they do it, every person in the military does it, every elected official, every uh, senior official, they will cite the oath of office. And right. I'd like to read it, because I'd like to put this oath of office in context to where we've been in the last couple of days. Good idea, I like that. So the President of the United States, um, being sworn in as President of the United States, said, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, defend the Constitution of the United States. So the wow. emphasis is on faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Those are the two key points from the oath of office. Wow. What we saw this week, I think, is a dereliction of that oath. And specifically, when we had this, um, basically this tantrum or a hissy fit that Donald Trump had with Nancy Pelosi, and remember this all thing started because um, they met to talk about the infrastructure. Right. Funding. Something that he had agreed to, agreed to a few weeks back. Right. They asked for one trillion. He said, well, how about two trillion? And I'll show up with all my stuff and let's plan this meeting. And then Nancy Pelosi had said something about him being involved in a cover up just before. Well, and that, and, you know, it and, it, and it has been, you know, it has been reported that maybe she was baiting him. It is possible. I think um, she was just telling the truth about what's happening because he is involved in a cover up. Well, and that, you know, for Donald Trump is fighting words. Right. And so when it came time to have this meeting, um, the set, what I call a stagecraft, was all put yes, in place. I the believe. curtains were drawn. The press, was, the press was outside the window. Right. He, you know, he, he, he had a kind of a script that he was going to follow, and by gosh, he did. And what right. was that script? Basically, he says, I'm not going to do anything right. until the Democrats drop the investigation. Right. That's very serious, because what is. he's saying is, I'm not going to sit and pass, sign any bills. I'm not going to perform my job as president. My executed, of, right. my office Oath of, office. of right. president of the United States, to execute the office of president of the United States, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I'm tired of the Democrats investigating me. Well, I right. don't think the Oath of Office said, comma, as a qualifier, comma, <laughs> Because yeah, right. you're tired of being investigated right. unless, by... Unless, yeah, there's yeah, no I, unless in there. I, I don't think I read that just now in the I intro, so. and I don't think it's there. No, it's so not there. So this is a very serious thing again. Once it again, is. it's very serious. Right. Um, we know that by, you know, instructing people to deny the subpoenas been issued, whether it be for documents or individuals, and telling them and refusing those subpoenas... Um, you know, there's, a, there's an immediate conflict with the, you know, the congressional powers that have been bestowed upon the House of Representatives right. to do these things. Right. Absolutely. Um, when it comes to the IRS tax returns, the subpoena for that, that's been blocked. You know, the language is very clear on that. Right. Shall, you know, give these Mnuchin's documents over. Mnuchin's going to be in big trouble because of what he's doing. It's not really even his place to say mm -hmm. no. He's right. not even the one that really has the power to do that, except that Trump has sort of empowered him to do it. Right. But he, there was two um, cases, court cases, where the judge said, no, sorry, the one where um, they were going after his financials. Mm -hmm. And so he put a block in there against them being able to do that. And the 
And they said, no, that well, you do not have enough. They actually ridiculed the... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they ridiculed, ridiculed the them saying, are you kidding me? Yes. You know? The judge is like, this is frivolous yeah. and trivial yeah. and don't waste the court's time anymore. Just, you know, do what you're supposed to do yeah. is basically what the judge Man, said. And we'll talk him. a little bit about that. I just think that, you know, we have this, I mean, it's The Apprentice all over again. It's, 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 it's reality <laughs> TV being played out before the American public. And it involves right. our, 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 our sense of government. Right. And Schumer came out and said, point blank, the presidency is not a reality show. Very specifically well, called it for what it was. But that, that's how it's being played. It is how it's, it's being how played. It's how it's being played. So what you had was Nancy Pelosi you know, basically saying, I'm concerned. I pray for the president, his aides, his staff, his I family for, him, yeah. for an intervention. Please, and he needs okay, one. I, you know, you know, I've got to put myself in devil's advocate in, on this situation as well. That was pretty inflammatory. Very inflammatory. You know, um, but here's the response. I'm, I'm, I'm walking away from this negotiation. I'm not going to do anything until the investigations are, are, are halted. Right. That's extreme. But also then, of course, now his, his response about crazy, crazy Nancy. Crazy Nancy. Now she's got a nickname now. <laughs> it took her a while, but now she's got a nickname. Crazy Nancy. <laughs> Um, you know, she's lost it. She's not the same Nancy that I knew she's before. She's crazy now, right? And I, think the one, it, yeah. I think the one that really, though, we all know we get a nickname from Donald Trump. I mean, right. that's, that's what you get from a third grader. Right. But we know that that's what Donald Trump loves to do is assign nicknames. And that's, by gosh, that's what right. he's done with Nancy Pelosi. Crazy Nancy. Now, what upset me was to see these mocked videos that have been tweeted by the President of the United States yes. that have been edited, basically disparaging her words right. and image by a slowing it down right. to make it appear that she is either um, inebriated right. or, you know, there's something wrong with her. Right. And so um, they slowed that down. So she's slurring her words mm -hmm. and then um, editing out the parts where she's just frantically waving her hands or arm gestures. Right. And um, that's, that's fairly disturbing. Now, you'll have these in campaigns, but you don't alter. You don't the alter video. the the, right. the videos. Itself. You play them as is, right. and then you make your commentary about how you know wrong this candidate is, or how wrong that candidate is. Right. But you don't alter them to make it appear that that is an actual reality. But that's what he's been doing all along. He did it in 2016. He's doing it now, um, and he will do it in the future as we go forward. You know, and for him to come out into the rose garden completely prepared to give this little speech. He even had flyers to hand out, for goodness sake. How does Same. that happen with a spontaneous reaction? Yes, exactly. <laughs> when he's supposed to be inside in an infrastructure meeting, mm -hmm. he's actually outside in a pre-planned, obviously orchestrated um, little talk that he's going to give, um, claiming how he wasn't out of control. And then the next day, when he's in front of the farmers, and instead of talking about what's going on for the farmers, he's getting some of his, like, um, as Huckabee Sanders was there and... Uh, Kelly Unk, Thank you. Kellyanne Conway, Kelly uh, Conway, Larry Kudlow. Oh, yeah, they all, he put them on the spot and say, now you tell me, was I calm? And, of course, they say, yes, you were calm. Well, I don't know if he put them on the spot because they almost said identically the same words, That's what I mean, word but, for yeah. word. So I don't, they knew they were I'm going not, to be. I'm not sure it was on the spot impromptu. I think it was, right. again, stagecraft. Stagecraft, and it, I agree. It, it reminded me of very early on... <laughs> In his presidency, where they're all gathered around the table and they're all required to yes, say, say how, thank nice. how thankful they are to be working for the president of the United States. <laughs> and it reminded me of something you would see with Kim Jong Un in North right? Korea. Exactly. <laughs> you know, expecting to have accolades or else you get lined up exactly. you know, against, against the wall. And that's kind of the way we're headed, which is just absolutely well, it's terrifying. Just, it's just silly. I mean, it's. Well, I used to think silly, and I used to think ridiculous, and I used to just go, this is outrageous, and kind of laugh about it. But, you know, the closer we get to war with Iran, that is very another scripted mm -hmm. type of a theatrical move that he has put in place himself by all the different steps he's taken to poke at them, to make them, yeah. you know, be inflammatory. So it scares me. I'm terrified we're going to go to war. Well, okay. Let me ask you this question. Pertaining to the, the walk away. I call it the walk, the tantrum walk away. The tantrum walk away. The hissy fit exactly. walk away, however you want to call it. Um, 
You think he's serious about not entertaining legislation until the Democrats drop the investigation? Absolutely, I think you he You think is. that's serious? I do think he's that. I think he's even said at one point that he will shut down the government until okay. it's done. Okay, well, he's already done that. Right? As we well, know, so we know he'll ago. do it again. So we know he did that. He followed up, he followed up on his words. Right. So if you're a Republican in the Senate or the House, and you just heard, you know, the, the commander in chief, your president of your party, right. basically saying, I'm going to gridlock everything until this happens. I'm going to hold my breath as a child would, just right. like he did about the government shutdown, because I didn't right. get my, my $5.7 billion for the wall. I'll hold my breath until, everybody until stops everyone everything. stops everything. What do you say as a senator, a Republican senator? Well, if or you're a Mitch Republican? McConnell, you've already been doing that anyway. Because how many bills that have been passed, overwhelmingly passed, in the House, and they get to the Senate, and he won't do anything with them? He's already said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to pass any bills. So why don't I'm not the going to even bring Why don't the Democrats make more hay out of that? Why don't, they, don't why don't they put a spotlight on the fact that, you know, if we have nothing to pass, we might as well go with impeachment. Yeah, might as well. We've got well, nothing better to do. Do it. I don't understand why they're not. I'm okay. very frustrated with the fact well, that they are dragging their feet. We'll talk about that one, too. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. But I still want... I still there's want, so much in it, I yeah. know. And each thing is kind of connected to the next. And So uh, what was your reaction regarding the video? Um, well... When you first saw it, I mean... The one that he the doctored one, you mean? Yes, of, of Nancy uh, well, Pelosi. The first ones that I saw were they were next to each other. The um, the news channel had put the doctored one and the real one right, right next to each other. That's the one I so saw. So you could really see how much it had been doctored, and that was just outrageous, absolutely outraged. So given the given the um, what we used to say the new normal, I like <sighs> to say the new deplorable new normal. Deplorable the, normal. Yeah, the new deplorable. Normal. normal, right? Um, does this even register on the on the scale of something that people should get shocked about and upset about? Well, I and think I'm not they talking should. about. I'm not talking about journalists. I'm not talking about right. any news agencies. I'm talking people. about just good old fashioned folks uh, in the Midwest, the East Coast, the West Coast. You would think that they would, but I'm afraid that they won't because Trump can walk down Fifth Street and shoot somebody, remember? And yeah. they won't. They won't change your mind about him. And, and so Nancy, that's the part that's And it's Nancy scary. Pelosi. And it's Nancy Pelosi. And it's so Nancy she's not Pelosi. well loved by, by many. By the Republicans. So, yes, yeah. I agree. Right now, I'm not so happy with Nancy either because of the way she's dragging her feet. There is a majority now of people in the of D Democrats in the House that want her to move forward, at least with an impeachment inquiry. You know, start the inquiry, even if you're not going to start official you know, impeachment process, well, at least start the inquiry. Can't you say that the investigations and the requests of, of subpoenas is a really part of that inquiry? Yeah, but it's not official. So unless it's official, it's not going to be on his record as any kind of impeachment. And he needs to have that on his record. Or we have basically said, it's okay to do what you did. It's okay to work with the Russians to get yourself elected. It's okay. We don't mind taking money from the Russians and the Saudis. It's okay to do that. And I just don't think that's okay. And I think well, we, we, got a lot of, we, we got a lot of, actually a lot of senators um, jumping in on this issue. And we're going to get to that as soon as we get back from our, our break. Okay. I'm Tim Apicella <laughs> with Cynthia Sinclair. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Got it. Hi, this is Tim Apicella. Welcome back. I'm here with Cynthia Sinclair, and we're talking Trump Week. Uh, the title of the show is Hissy Fit for POTUS. Uh, before the break, <laughs> what we did, we talked about, um, you know, the impeachment uh, right. discussion. But before right. we get to that, I just want to finish up on um, the comment again from Donald Trump about the stable genius oh, gosh, comment. Yes. I'm a stable genius. I'm not crazy. I'm a stable genius. I couldn't believe he said it. When I heard it come out of his mouth, I just laughed. But he said it before, even in right. the, before he became president. I got a good brain. I you have know. A, a brain. But, <laughs> you know, isn't that... A big brain. Isn't this abnormal? It is. I yes. mean, but at this point, we're now 
almost 900 days into the presidency. It's insane. I mean, at what point do people go, mm, the 25th Amendment, maybe this is an issue we should go back and explore? I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, I, it's kind of scary. And, you know, scary. maybe that's what Nancy Pelosi was trying to allude to. And this is what she was alluding to, you know, I And believe. so, of course, he doubles down and, and went on the attack to respond to that. But um, what she said after he said the stable genius comment is, and I quote, when the extremely stable genius starts acting more presidential, I'll be happy to work with them on <laughs> infrastructure, trade, and other issues. I love that. I love that know. she said that. That was so great. I don't know, though. I'm a little concerned about what Nancy's doing. I think she's dragging her feet, and I think she's looking at this from a political point of view. And I'm sorry, but when you, that's your job is to keep America safe from presidents like this guy, you don't get to be political anymore. Yeah. You have to go by the Constitution. The Constitution well, says you got to impeach this guy. Well, it, it doesn't say you have to. It well, says thou mayest versus thou shalt. Right. Um, you know, and it doesn't say either of those. I just made that up. <laughs> no, but you know, when, right. when Nancy Pelosi says obstruction, it's a very clear and in plain sight. Yes. Okay. So she kind of boxed, her, boxed herself into a corner right. with these definitive statements. Right. I and, agree. And she, I think she, she, her concern is that she is being boxed in into a corner of impeachment. Well, well she even said that she but thought she that, keeps that going he in wants and out of that. It. Yeah. He wants to be impeached. And I thought, I don't believe that. Because he doesn't want that on his record. Because if you... Look at all of the stuff back in the beginnings and the things that people said then and now even that this was all about getting the Trump brand. You know, he didn't even exactly expect to be president. He was thinking this is just a really good, you know, uh, free advertisement for the Trump brand. Well, and help him get his show back. Right. The so Apprentice, because his ratings were way down. Right. So That's what Howard Stern has recently been saying, saying on air. Too, right, exactly. I and, and I, I mean, know that there's been a lot of people sort of all along that have said that, that that's all he yeah. was really after. So impeachment does not help his brand yeah. at all. Well, let me read something um, from a Democrat from New Jersey, a freshman Democrat in the House of Representatives, Tom Malinowski. And I, I like what he said. He said, the law can survive the efforts of bad people to defy it. The law cannot survive the hesitation of good people to defend it. Thank you very much. Exactly. Yes, I agree with that guy. And I believe that the hesitation gives him more power. He becomes more blatant and more powerful every single day well, that we the, wait. It's not just the power. It's, it, it's what is being compromised in the process of gathering that power? Right. What is the erosion of the institutions? Yes. Um, you know, the, the new judges being put in place. The new the deplorable new low, you know, exactly. the new normal. I mean, right. so as he's gathering more and more strength and power, what is being compromised? So, well, the State Department has been gutted. You know, the judges that are being put in place are very partisan. The, the people that he's putting in key positions of power, namely the Department of Homeland Security and who he's got overseeing the election safety. Right. Can we move mm -hmm. into that now? Well, <laughs> that's my number one yes. thing that I think but is let the me, most important. Wait, wait, but there's, Sorry. there's a couple of comments. There's more. There's, there's, more. More. <laughs> there's more. And I, I think I want to talk about before we talk about the election security, okay. I, I, I do want to talk about what the Senate's saying. Okay, because right, right. they're very, very um, concerned that this impeachment process will damage their chances of overtaking the Senate in, two, in 2020. Well, and Amash has come out saying that he will support impeachment. He's which one. Is a he's Republican one. Yeah, senator. but he's a lone voice. Yes, he is. But maybe. And you know, we said last week, did that then... crack the vase? It was that a crack in the vase? No, it's not. Well, if that's, it's a crack, been, it wasn't big enough. Right? Yeah, well, it, it hasn't been answered, you know, because right. there's been no other uh, chorus to back, right, right, to I, go, sing along with him. Exactly. But I do want to talk about what, um, uh, basically, Diane Feinstein, she's the senator of the Judiciary Committee. She said that we, uh, the Senate Democrats in the House, have to cool it on impeachment. That it'll hurt to win back the Senate in 2020. And I don't want to go there. We should not not go there now. And it's basically, we need the evidence. We need to get, ask the questions, get the documents, and see what we have before we march forward. Now, I've said there's at least something there in the, in the Mueller report 
as is, unredacted right. or redacted. Right, nothing else added to you it. Could, I, I think you could move ahead. Thou I mayest agree. move ahead. Thou mayest, I agree. And I, I think there's something there. Um, I think Diane Feinstein is wrong to say that. I think it's the same um, mentality that, that Nancy Pelosi has, too. Let's drag our feet. Let's get the evidence first. We walk closer and closer to 2020 every single day. Every day that we wait, we give him more power to be reelected. So it's that Dianne Feinstein is coming from a partisan um, political point of view. And I think that's wrong because right now there's a crime that has been, you know, perpetrated the on, obstruction is, on you're what America. You're referring to? Yes. Okay. And so he needs to be held accountable for that crime, not whether or not it's going to hurt our ability to take back the Senate. I'm sorry, but if we still have Trump in charge, who cares if we've got the Senate? I mean, we've still got Trump in charge. So, <clears throat> and Trump doesn't get held accountable. Now, that can't happen. And at least, I don't understand how it would possibly hurt anybody to start the impeachment. I don't understand that. Because all it really does, to, do, to start the impeachment inquiry anyway, sorry, I get all worked up with all this stuff. We love to see you get worked up. <laughs> what it's all about <laughs> but the thing is sorry no, no um, I, your point is we have to make a statement or why are you there in the first place exactly what you've got to do your job and your job is to hold people like this accountable if you don't hold them accountable I just read it yeah at the beginning of the show exactly and so we've got to hold him accountable and if he gets to this is the thing that makes me mad is when i hear these people that are against the impeachment We'll just let it get worked out in the election. Sorry, our election is not secure. Period. End. We know about the two Florida hacks. We know about the gerrymandering thing that you, I would like to hear more about that we were talking about yeah. before. Um, we know that Trump cheats. He's going to cheat again. Until we get some election security bills passed, which are now dead in the Senate, yeah. two of them that were passed overwhelmingly in the House. Um, Bipartisan bills are dead in the Senate, and they are bills that would help to protect, you know, at least get um, paper ballots going, all of these things to secure our election. Because without a secure election, it doesn't matter if why Biden's ahead. Why aren't, you know, if, you're, the, if oh. you're a Democrat, why aren't you putting a spotlight on that? I don't understand. Because it seems to me that I don't care if you're a Republican, Independent, or Democrat. A fair election is a fair election. Exactly. I don't think anyone Thank wants you. to see a, 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 a tilted election. Right. I, I just don't think. Well, that's even, why the two bills. Even, that and came I don't out even think even house. loyal, loyal Trump supporters would want to see that. But, you know, maybe I'm giving the benefit of the doubt here, but Some I don't think they want to see that. But most of them I don't think would either. I so agree. Why, why are the Democrats missing that opportunity? I don't understand that. Okay. That actually is the thing that scares me the most. Because right now, who cares if it's Biden or Bernie or Kamala Harris? Who cares if he's going to cheat? It doesn't matter who the Democrat, you know, uh, what you call it, are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's running, right? It, it absolutely matters not at all because he will cheat, he will win. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the election. And this is a, a, a recent um, breaking news here. The U.S. Supreme Court has um, denied the lower court's decision about um, gerrymanding, gerrymanding in Ohio and Michigan. So that means those court decisions that they're going to have to redraw the districts before the 2020 election won't, now will not take place. And that was a Republican gerrymandered yes. bunch of stuff. Yes, they were the beneficiaries on. of that gerrymandering. <sighs> um, the Democrats thought they were going to have a, uh, an even playing field. So, okay, so U.S. Supreme Court has, has struck that down. Oh, gee, funny thing. Okay, Supreme so court. what does that mean, though? What it means is don't cry the blues. That means get activated. That means get engaged and get every registered Democrat and every unregistered that become registered voter, right. get them engaged. Because that's the only way you've got to, you know, basically respond to these kind of court decisions. Right. Yeah. There's no other way. You could cry the blues. We could all cry the blues. It doesn't matter. Doesn't change anything. Doesn't change that's a thing. right. Yeah. So lick your wounds and move on. Pick yourself up and, and get those people to the polls right. in 2020. Well, I'd like to see some some really smart IT guys get involved because 
Having worked the polls, and I know I've said this before on the show, mm -hmm. having worked the polls, I can see how easy it would be to hack them. Yep. And you don't need to hack all of them, just a few of them. No, your Secretary of State in each, in each state of the union, right. they run these elections, right. not the federal government. Right. Okay, so each what's state. to prevent them from um, implementing yes. these ideas that you didn't get passed, you know, in the Senate? Right. Well, look what happened in Georgia right. with the election and Stacey Abrams. And we know that, what was it, Keene or Kern, whatever his name is, um, he, he talk about some gerrymandered stuff, same thing. Making it almost impossible for black voters to get to the polls and things like that. Like that, what happened in Texas. And, and things like that that were addressed in these bills that came out of the House that Mitch McConnell will not bring to the floor for a vote. So it's like, how can we do anything? Even if we try, there's nothing can be done if, if the Republicans are going to stand firm on being corrupt, no scruples well, kind of a, people. A, a free and fair election, although, you know, history has said that they haven't been free and fair, as in the 1850s, 1860s, in the reconstruction right. phase of right. our country. Um, but really, it's, it's a primary building block of our Constitution and our democracy. It is. And you would think that even in red states, that they are interested in any free and fair election. But maybe that's not the case. Well, Cynthia, we've come to that time where we're oh out of gosh. time. I can't believe how fast it goes by. Wait, I have three more cards. Well, let's go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Give me one of them. Just give me one of them. Go ahead. Okay. Um, let's see. We'll go with uh, treason. He calls treason for all of the investigators that yeah, have. Yeah, he, uh, he did that specifically named McCain, John McCain. He wants to accuse John McCain of treason. My God. Well, Call he also me Page and Strzok, yeah. all of them. Well, and, and, and Page was the uh, girlfriend of Strzok. Right. And, and uh, they talked back and forth with the text messages. He, re he repeated himself, this is very treasonous, this is very treasonous. You know, again, when you start throwing out treason as a um, political barb, yeah. um, that's, that's very serious, number one. Two, it's... You know, you really should have the evidence before you make the accusation. Well, he doesn't even know what he's talking about well, because there understand. has to be aid to the enemy. Right. Okay. Well, in his <laughs> mind, everyone's an enemy. <laughs> right. so, it's like aid not to a foreign enemy country. Weapon. He's not thinking for a country. He's just thinking by political enemies. <laughs> exactly. And unfortunately, I think that's how he's interpreted the definition of treason. I think he is because he keeps saying that there was a coup, an attempted coup of my I'm presidency. Sorry, but maybe Nancy. Pelosi's prayer for intervention isn't that far off base. I agree. I think maybe not. I, well, okay. <laughs> Cynthia, thank you so yeah. much. We're thank gonna, you, we're Tim. Gonna, we'll hit this next week as oh, we gosh, always do. I hope Jay yeah. Fidel's here next week. Right. And um, so this is Tim Apicella with Cynthia Sinclair. It's Trump Week, and we'll see you next Friday at 11 a.m. Aloha.